All right, so fourth statement. Let x be a point in the inverse image of an intersection of subsets of the codomain. Then f of x is in this intersection. And so the point f of x is in the set g sub i for every index i. And hence, point x is in the inverse image of the set g sub i for every index i. And so the point x is in the intersection of the inverse images of the sets g sub i. And thus the inverse image of the intersection of the sets g sub i is a subset of the intersection of the inverse images of those sets. So conversely, let x be a point in the intersection of the inverse images of the sets g sub i. Then the point x is in the inverse image of the set g sub i for every index i. And so f of x is in the set g sub i for every index i. And hence the point f of x is in the intersection of the sets g sub i. And so the point x is in the inverse image of this intersection. And thus the intersection of the inverse images of the sets g sub i is a subset of the inverse image of this intersection. So we have demonstrated set inclusion in both directions, and so the two sets are equal. The inverse image of an intersection of subsets of the codomain is equal to the intersection of the inverse images of those sets. So fifth statement. Let x be a point in the inverse image of the complement of the set A and Y. Then f of x is in this complement. So the point f of x is not in the set A. And hence the point x is not in the inverse image of the set A. So the point x is in the complement of the inverse image of A in x. So conversely, let x be a point in the complement of the inverse image of A in x. Then this point x is not in the inverse image of the set A. And so the point f of x is not in the set A. And hence f of x is in the complement of A in Y. And so the point x is in the inverse image of the complement of A in Y. And so we have demonstrated set inclusion in both directions, therefore the two sets are equal. And we have that the inverse image of the complement of A and Y is the complement of the inverse image of A and X. So in general, an inverse image
preserves, inclusions, unions, intersections, and complements. And this makes an inverse image a much more powerful tool than a direct image. So new definition. Let X and Y be topological spaces. And let f be a function from x into y. Then the function f is continuous at a point. x in the domain space x, if and only if, for every open neighborhood V of F of X in the range space Y there exists an open neighborhood U of X in the domain space X such that this open neighborhood U is contained in the inverse image of the set V which is an open neighborhood of F of Y or correction F of X in the range space Y. And if the function F is continuous at every point x in the domain space x, then the function f is simply continuous. Okay, so now we'll prove a theorem that will give us another way to determine whether or not a function is continuous. So let x and y the topological spaces then a function f from x into y is continuous if and only if for every open set V in the range space Y, the inverse image of that set is open in the domain space X. So proof. Let the function F be continuous. Let V be an open set in the range space Y and let X be a point in the inverse image of the set V then f of x is in the set v, that is, the set v is an open neighborhood, of the point f of x in the range space y, so as the function f is continuous, 
there exists an open neighborhood. U of x in the domain space x such that this open neighborhood is contained in the inverse image of the set V. And so the point x is in the interior of the inverse image of the set V in the domain space x. And hence the inverse image of the set V is contained in its interior in the domain space X. And, and as the reverse inclusion is always true, we have that the inverse image of the set V is equal to its interior in the domain space X. And so the inverse image of V is open in the domain space X. So conversely, suppose that for every open set V in the range space Y, the inverse image of that set is open in the domain space X. Now let f of x be a point in the set V. Then the set V is an open neighborhood of the point f of x in the range space y. And so Point x is in the inverse image of v, which is open in the uh, space x. That is, the inverse image of v is an open neighborhood. of the point x in the space x where the inverse image of v is certainly contained in itself and so for every open neighborhood v of f of x in the range space y there exists an open neighborhood u of x in the domain space x such that the set is contained in the inverse image of the set v and hence the function f mapping x into y is continuous. Now strictly speaking we proved that the function f is continuous at the point x but as we chose that point arbitrarily, the uh, function is continuous at every point x in the uh, domain space x, and hence the function is simply continuous. Okay, so as a corollary, let x and y be topological spaces. and let the function f from x into y be continuous. If z is a subspace of x, then the restriction of the function f to z is also continuous. So proof.
Let phi be the restriction of the function f to z, and let v be an open set in the range space y. Notice that the intersection of z with the inverse image of v is the intersection of z with all points in the uh, domain space x such that f of x is in the set v and so this is the set of all those points in the set z such that f of x is in the set v which is the inverse image of v under the map phi which again is the restriction of the function f to z. Now as the function f is continuous the inverse image of v is open in the space x and so the intersection of z with the inverse image of v which is the inverse image under the map phi of the set v is open in the subspace z and therefore the restriction of the function f to z which is a map from z into y is continuous. Okay, so next we'll prove lemma. Let x together with some topolo topology tau sub x be a topological space. Let y be a subset of the space x. And let the function f from the subset y into the space x be defined by f of y is equal to y. Then f inverse of the topology on x, which is the set of all inverse images of the sets u, where u is in the topology on x, is the subspace topology on y. So proof. Let u be a set in the topology on x. Then the inverse image of the set u is the set of all those points in the set y such that f of y is in the set u. Now since f of y is equal to y, this is a set of all those points in the set y such that the point y is in the set u. Now as y is a subset of the space x, this is the point, uh, set of all points in the space x such that that point is in the set y and that point is in the set u. And so this is the intersection of y with u. And so the inverse image of the topology on X is the set of all intersections of Y with U where U is in the topology on X, which is the subspace topology. On Y. So notice that if y is a subspace of x, then the function mapping y into x defined by f of y equals y is continuous. Okay, so we will end here for today. Next time, we will look at a much more abstract topology called the projection topology. So I hope you have enjoyed the 16th lecture. Thanks for watching.